Hello, it's Visual Trulius here, and today we're gonna talk about why every single editor and photographer should be using Photoshop to edit their photos. I need a new intro so badly. That intro is so old. I've made that intro like the first thing I ever learned to do in Premiere. I didn't even use After Effects for that. But yeah, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn this into this in Photoshop in like 10 minutes. Just download the photo from down below and follow along, open Photoshop and start practicing with me because that's the best way to learn. Just pause the video sometimes and then just try to replicate what I'm doing here in Photoshop and you should be able to do these things in the future with your own images too. So let's get started here in Photoshop. So the number one thing I think is super special about Photoshop is that you can add stuff into your images and you can remove stuff from your images. So this shot that I have here is taken in Indonesia and I, I like the shot but the thing that bothers me is that there's a lot of boats here on the right corner there's a boat in the middle there's a boat here in in the front and this would be pretty hard to remove later on in, in Lightroom and I don't mean that you necessarily have to remove them but for me personally I do not enjoy them there that much so I would just remove them but I think the easiest way to remove them is not to use any removing tools I think you have to think about this when you are shooting so because I thought okay there's a lot of boats there and I do not want to remove those afterwards what I did I took another shot which was taken a bit more to the left side so here you can see the other shot so I took another shot of the ocean and I knew okay here I don't have to remove much there's a bit of lines there's a bit of bold in the frame but it, nothing too much so what my thought process was was that I'm gonna replace this ocean here in order to get rid of the boats. So that is a really powerful thing about Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'm just gonna move my image here now on top of this image and I'm gonna hit Command T or Control T on my keyboard and move this up here. Okay, so now we have two layers. You might wonder, but Julius, it's in on top of the image. I can't even see what's under there. How can I achieve that? And in Photoshop, there are things called layer masks. And this is one of the most powerful things about Adobe softwares overall. You can mask things out. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna decrease the opacity here a bit. And then I'm just gonna match the horizon level with the horizon level we have under here. So I'm gonna hit Command T again, zoom out by holding Alt and scrolling. And then I'm gonna just hold shift and just bring this to the horizon level. So I'm kind of just like expanding the photo uh, and uh, that's it. Then I'm gonna increase the opacity back to 100%. I'm gonna add a layer mask into this. So now everything that is white in a layer mask is revealed and everything that is black in the layer mask is hidden. So we are never removing anything in Photoshop. We are always just hiding or revealing. So if I now just brush here, you can see that when we brush with black, we can kind of bring that layer under visible again. Uh, so I'm gonna use the selection tool, the rectangle tool here to drop a line to the horizon level. And then I'm gonna invert this selection, Command Shift I, or easier way would just to be select the sky, of course. And then I'm gonna take a brush and brush with black here. And boom, now we have an ocean here and uh, we don't have the boats there anymore. And I know it doesn't match perfectly with the photo, but it's realistic enough. And if you wanna fix some parts later on, you can just come here, hit X on your keyboard. You can see that these colors here toggle. I can just hit X and then bring some of these parts back if you want to hide them really well. But be careful, you don't do anything too dramatic because it might start to look a bit unrealistic. Okay, so that is the number one thing why Photoshop is so powerful. You can shoot differently and you can kind of save situations because I really like that mountain behind there, but there were no way that I could have removed those boats while I was there or afterwards it would take a lot of time. So just replanning your shoots a bit and that way you can, you can really save time and you can get beautiful things done in Photoshop. All right, so the number two thing why everyone should be using Photoshop is the freedom of removing whatever you want from your photo. And there's a billion different ways to kind of remove things in Photoshop, but I'm just gonna show you how easy it is and how you should do it. So instead of doing it destructively on the layer, I always recommend creating a layer on top. So now we have a layer that is empty and I'm gonna take the healing press tool from here. So this is the same as spot healing uh, or spot removing tool or whatever that is called in Lightroom. And pretty much if I hit this here, sample all layers, what it does, it samples all the layers in our image. And I can zoom in by holding Alt and scrolling. And now if I do this, 
you can see that we are getting rid of the boat really easily. And now it's not destructive. If I decide that, okay, it doesn't look 100% realistic, what I can do, I can erase this and then I can try it again. But if I would do it on top of the layer, that would be destructive and then I would have to hit Command Z on my keyboard and just go multiple steps back. So I always recommend doing it on another layer. So I'm just gonna take the healing brush tool and remove some of these things and see how easy it is. It's kind of as easy as in Lightroom. It's way faster and also sometimes way more accurate. So just clicking once or, or a couple of times, it will get rid of your, your annoying things in your photo really easily. So as you can see, this is a really powerful thing that you can use in your photos. But it, like, for example, in the beginning, we had a huge boat in our image. So of course the healing press tool will not work for something like that. So that is why I used uh, another shot to kind of hide any, everything that is under. And the powerful thing about Photoshop too, is that now if I turn this on and off, you can see that we still have the original file there. We're not doing anything on top of the image. We're always creating these things in layers and we can turn them on and off later on. And that is a super powerful thing about Photoshop. But look how clean our image looks now. That is a really good way to remove things in Photoshop. And I recommend every single one of you start doing it because it is just a way faster way of doing it compared to Lightroom. Number three reason why I think every single one should be using Photoshop is that you have total freedom on where do you want to put light and what kind of objects do you want to put and behind what and let me explain what I mean by this so now you can see that we have this shot here so we have the ocean we have the mountain and we have uh, the sky and these are all in the same layer so I'm just gonna do this now I don't recommend doing this I always recommend keeping all of your layers as separate but I'm gonna do it for ed educational purposes so let's say this would now be our single shot you can see that everything is in one layer uh, so I just combined them by holding command and then hitting E. Um, so now what I need to do in order to separate this, I would just grab the quick selection tool from here or hit W on your keyboard. So what I can do in Photoshop, I can separate my objects into different layers super easily. So let's say I want to take the volcano from here, like that. Of course, we have to do some refining on the selection afterwards. So now you can see that we selected some of the ocean too. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard to get the rectangle tool. And if I hold Alt or Option on Mac on my keyboard, I get the mi this minus icon here and I can just do this and get rid of the selection on those parts. So now you can see that, okay, we got um, the mountain on our selection. So how do we separate this from that? I'm just gonna hit the layer mask icon, which hides everything else, but what is visible in the selection. So now you might wonder about why do we want to do this? The reason why we want to do this is that we want to separate all of our layers in order to be able to put light or any kind of objects behind. So now let's separate the sky. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this layer, hit Command J or Control J on your keyboard. I'm going to hit on the mask and hit Command or Control I on your keyboard. So what this does, it just inverts the mask, which means that everything that is white here again is revealed. So if I hit Command I, you can see that it just inverts the mask. So it just reveals what is uh, opposite to the mountain. So now you might wonder, but okay, still our sky and foreground is on the same layer. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna select this under part with my rectangle tool. And then I'm gonna just fill that with black. So I'm gonna grab the brush and with 100% opacity and flow, I'm gonna brush here. And now you can see that we have our sky and our mountain on separate layers. Then I'm gonna duplicate this once more and hit Command I. So now you can see uh, we have our ocean, we have our sky and we have our mountain. So now all of our layers are in different layers and what we can do, we can start adding light, we can start adding objects behind this and this is a super powerful way to kind of edit your photos and I use this all the time. So now we just have to realign this a bit. So let's say uh, our ocean, let's name this. So a good way to stay on track with your layers is naming them. This is sky and I want my sky of course be under everything because it's the last object it's the furthest away from the camera so it makes sense that it's under everything and then after that i'm just gonna have um my ocean and then i'm gonna have my mountain on top so now let's say okay i want to brighten up this only the sky now, i know this could be possible to do in lightroom too but see how easy it is to do here so if i want to brighten up my sky i would just come over here Go to adjustments. If you don't have adjustments here, you can go to window and hit adjustments uh, here. And that's how you get this. 
I can just add an effect. Let's say I want to add a curves here. So in Lightroom, you are always going to add curves on top of everything because that's the only way to do it in Lightroom. But in Photoshop, I can add it into specific layers and, and modify whatever I want in the photo. So now if I want to brighten up this, let's just brighten it up a bit like that. Maybe decrease the tone a bit like that. So now you can see, okay, we added a nice contrast um, between the mountain and the sky. And then I will say, okay, I kind of want to make my mountain a bit taller. I don't like how the volcano or mountain looks that it's not high enough. So what I can do, I can just come here to mountain, hit command T on my keyboard, and I can squeeze this up even more. And then I'm just going to bring this down back to the point where it was and hit enter. And now you can see, okay, now our mountain is bigger. And of course, if we make our mountain bigger, we also have to move our sky up a bit because it looks kind of funny if it's not in the same spot. So I'm just gonna squeeze my mount, uh, sky slightly like that too. So now you can really start to understand why Photoshop is a super powerful tool and imagine the possibilities you have with everything right now. You can do whatever you want to a specific object and it's super fast because you are staying organized with your layers. So sky, ocean, mountain, and now it's all up to your creativity what you want to do from it. So this was number three reason why everyone should be using Photoshop. And the number four reason why everyone should be using Photoshop for their edits is the total freedom of color creating. And I know in Lightroom there are really good color creating options, but think about now that we have all of these objects in separate layers, we can adjust the color separately to all of these. And in Lightroom we are always applying effects on top of everything. We have a tiny bit of masking capabilities here and there, but let's see, okay. So I introduced you to these adjustment layers already. Let's say I just want to add a brightness and contrast layer and I want to decrease the brightness of uh, the whole shot. I want to increase the contrast a bit. You can see that, okay, that doesn't look that good. But let's say I only want the effect to be visible here. Remember that in Photoshop, everything works with masks. So white reveals and black re like hides. So if I just brush this effect off with black color from here, you can see that we get a really nice like vignetting effect here. So you have a total freedom of where the effect is going to be visible. And this would kind of be same as adding a radial filter, but you're so much more free with your selections. So let's go into color creating. I want to add a hue and saturation here and I want to increase the saturation. All right. So now we increase the saturation of the whole image. And again, if I don't want this effect to be visible everywhere, or if I want it to be less visible somewhere else, I can just in, like decrease my opacity or flow. I usually use flow because it's a bit smoother. Um, so if I don't want this to be visible that much in the ocean, that is how I remove the effect from the ocean. Okay, so now we added a bit of color into our image. So let's go a bit further. I'm gonna come here and let's say I'm at a, adding a color balance. So as you can see, we have this on different layers and we can specify what we want to make visible from those layers. In Lightroom, you always have HSL sliders. You can determine the luminance, you can de uh, determine the hue and also the saturation of those colors. But in Photoshop, you have way more freedom. So let's say I want to add a bit of blue to the midtones. See how nice of an effect that is. But I don't like that it's visible here on the sky again. So I'm just gonna brush here and uh, that gets rid of the effect on this part. So that is how powerful color creating is. There are a million different color creating tools. There's selective color, there's curity maps, there's color balance, there's hue and saturation, curves and all of these different things. And I'm not gonna go through all of those now, but I just wanna in this video show how powerful it is to color create in Photoshop. So see how nice of an effect that is by just adding a brightness and contrast layer, hue and saturation and color balance. And let's add another brightness layer and maybe increase the contrast. And now I want the effect only to be visible here. So now what I can do, command I again to invert. So it just inverts the mask. Um, and then I will bring the brightness back here uh, to the sky like that. Okay, so I'm gonna group this, command J, uh, G, and now you can see that that is the effect that we could create just by 
adding a couple of effects and we have total freedom on how they will look. All right, so that was my tip number four. And my tip number five for why everyone should be using Photoshop is that Photoshop actually has kind of like a built-in Lightroom in it. So after you've removed stuff from your images or replaced some things or made some things bigger and just modified your shot, uh, what you can do, you can edit your image in Camera Raw afterwards. So I don't recommend doing this what I'm next going to do all the time, but I'm just gonna group everything now. I'm gonna duplicate this, so Command-G to group, Command-J to duplicate and then command E to combine. So I'm just gonna do this so I have everything in one layer. So now if I turn this on and off, everything is in one layer again. So what I can do, I can open this thing called camera raw. So I'm gonna come here to camera raw filter. And what I can do, I can just edit this shot no normally like it would be in Lightroom. So I have all the same things, radio filters, graduated filters, adjustment brushes, all the same HSL sliders. So this is pretty much Lightroom, but it's built in Photoshop. So the reason why you should be also using Photoshop is that once you've edited everything in Photoshop, then you can just open your shot in Camera Raw and edit it in like Lightroom. So you have kind of two programs in one, which is really nice. So let's say I want to make my sky a bit darker from there. I would just come here and decrease my exposure normally. If I want to add a bit of clarity and brightness here to the ocean, I can do that and you can reset all these sliders by clicking with your right mouse button and hitting reset local correction settings. So let's say I'm gonna add a bit of clarity, I'm gonna add a bit of exposure here, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's come here to the radial filter, we can add a bit more brightness here to the sky, we can maybe add some dehaze for a nice light effect, maybe add increase the temperature a bit, and then I'm gonna duplicate this, I'm gonna reset it, hit the outside here, and decrease the exposure. So now you can see that, okay, we have the exact same capabilities here as in Lightroom. I can just edit this however I want now. Uh, let me just do some like minor changes here and there. I can increase the sharpening of this whole image. I can do the whole noise reduction thing here. And then I can come here to the camera calibration and play around with all these sliders to see what kind of colors do I want to do. So if you don't want to color create your image all the way in Photoshop and you are more familiar with Lightroom, you can always open in the camera rob and then edit it. So let's hit OK now. And you can see, boom, now we have a Lightroom edits here. The only thing that annoys uh, me in Photoshop is that if you don't turn your layers into these things called smart objects, you can't go back to your edit. So now the only way to go back, I would just have to hit Command C on my keyboard and that's how I get back. But if I turn this into a smart object, so I hit with my right mouse button and hit Convert to Smart Object. And now if I come here to Camera Raw Filter and let's say I will make some quick changes like that, I hit OK, you can see that it applied a smart filter here. So now if I double click on that, I can come back here and adjust this again. That is how powerful Photoshop is. I hope you learned some nice techniques from this video. Please watch this video over and over again and pause it. I know it was super fast and if you have any questions, put them down below and let me also know what type of content do you want to see from me in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and consider subscribing and liking the video if you like the content.